At long last, the Philadelphia Union are in the win column for the 2024 MLS season. We go over the club's 3-1 win over the Portland Timbers on Saturday before turning our attention to another Western Conference foe this weekend. That and more as Union Insider starts right now. Takes the strike on and it's off the inside of the post. Up for the Argentine. Oh, brilliant. Martinez. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. I'm Marissa Pilla. I'm with Sebastian Latou and Shannon Williams, as always. Uh, this week is pretty exciting because we get to talk about a win. And after starting the season with three draws, the Union had a pretty daunting task ahead of them this weekend. Go out to Portland, which is one of the toughest road environments in the league, bring back three points, and do it without six key members of their typical starting 11. So no easy feat and yet the boys in blue did just that. Here's a quick look back at all of the action from Providence Park. With a very short-handed side for Jim Curtin's team, it will be an interesting match here at Providence Park. No Andre Blake and Damian Lowe, no Daniel Gazak, no Ty Baribo, no Jose Martinez, no Jesus Bueno, no Ariel, no McGlynn. Jim Curtin said, we got no excuses. We got to keep our style. Okay, guys, look, uh, we have a great opportunity tonight to do something really special. Okay? Uh, All I ask for tonight from every guy in this room is to give me your maximum effort. If every guy gives their maximum effort, I guarantee we'll walk out of here with points. Okay? 11 guys together can beat any group of individual talent. We're going to need every guy in the room today more than ever. My memory serves me correctly. Someone picked Julian Carranza as their player to watch. I mean, I know you don't want to brag, but I'll, I'll toot the horn for you, Seba. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, what about this game and how it, how it played out suited his strengths so well? No, I think the, the fact that he was, a, like I would talk about, you know, the fact the smaller field, you know, being able to be in the box, getting the chances. He didn't have any goal yet uh, in a major league soccer season. He had a hat-trick in Champions Cup, but as a striker, you know, you know you want your first goal. And I think he was uh, willing to, to make the effort. I think uh, him and Ura really worked very well in this game together. And at the end, you know, he got uh, rewarded with two goals and, uh, you know, get his season uh, on track. Yeah, we got a brace out of Carranza. It's, you know, all we can ask for. And I, I want to give credit 
where credit's due because Shannon also said it was important to score off of set pieces and crosses and things like that. The union took advantage of those situations. So why did that play out so well? They really just capitalized on their opportunity. You saw them early on looking to soak up that pressure and then they hit them on, on a counter and a set piece. And those are things that they're good at and things that when you don't have things going your way in terms of the players they had available to them, that they can achieve some success. And I thought they did a good job of taking those opportunities when they came in and it came to the tune of three goals. Yeah, the, the press looked so well orchestrated at times and which was so impressive considering it was a group of players that we don't normally see all put together. What impression do the most about the combinations of plays? Were there any combos that stood out the most? I mean, for me, it was more like the defensive play from everybody. I think we saw them kind of changing a bit their formation, defensively play more in a 4-4-2. You got Marcus Anderson, who never play on the left side of the midfield, but did, you know, a great effort to really help the team. You have Chris Sullivan helping on the right side and Rafanello with Bedoya, you know, we never see this mix in the midfield. We did an amazing job, you know, really like following every run, making sure they were close to the defense and the line were close to each other because tactically, I think, with Jim Curtin, try to sit down and you know waiting for the mistake of uh, Portland and try to score on the one or two opportunities they have. They did it, and I think it was a perfect game plan for this game. Yeah, was there anything from the personnel that stood out to you? I think they just did a good job of, of staying connected to one another. We know that they were sitting a little bit deeper, and that, that let them press in those little moments where Portland were able to cross over the half-field line. But for the most part, just sitting compact and in front of their goal, I thought they did a good job of being closer to one another and making sure there weren't too many gaps for Portland to expose. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to go to our key play of the week presented by Subaru. The Union scored one of their classic quick restart goals, which he said was important, which ended up being the final one of their three on Saturday. To break it all down, we turn to Seba at the big board. Seba, what do you got? Thank you, Marissa. So yeah, let's go play this third goal of the Union by my pick. Julian Carranza, he started with a little foul from the Portland. You can see the frustration from the player and a quick play from Jacob Glesnes finding Michael Rua making a great run into the box. Great cross into the six yard box. And of course, Carranza, just an easy tap in. But if we are going to freeze the action right here, look at this. Glesnes looking already to see who is awake. If you look at everybody on the field, nobody really pay attention. Everybody is tired, frustrating. Zuparevich, the center backs of the Portland Timbers who just turned to play now three in the back, not in position as well. You can see Sullivan already on the ground. Jim Curtin not even paying attention. But who is paying attention? Jacob Glesnes. He's looking to see if maybe there's a possibility to find a ball in a space. You can see the connection between Glesnes and Rua, who probably know each other very well. There's probably a look from Rua seeing Glesnes going to the ball. Let's play now. Glesnes looking, nobody is paying attention. Great ball from Jacob Glesnes right in the run of Rua. A perfect cross using this turf wet directly in the feet of Carranza. Easy finish for our number nine to give the lead and the 3 0 for the Union. Thanks so much, Seba. And we've got more Union Insider for you in a bit. But first, here's your Union trivia question presented by United Concordia. Who is the only player in club history to play every minute of every match in two different seasons? Find out the answer later in the show. Now it's time for this week's Tweet of the Week. This one isn't exactly from a random fan, but rather our club's public address announcer, Kevin Casey, who said, Vamos! Massive three points for the boys. What a gutsy effort. This is why I love this team. Come on home, boys. Kevin, you aren't alone in your love for this team, and we agree about how massive a three points that was. Welcome back to Union Insider, presented by Independence Blue Cross. I'm Marissa Pillett. While we talk a lot on the show about the first team, we also like to give some love to our Union Academy, or Baby Snakes, as they're affectionately known. Here's our club reporter, Sage Hurley, with this week's Union Roundup, presented by Green Mountain Energy. What's up, Union fans? I'm Sage Hurley, here for this week's edition of Union Roundup. It's been a momentous week for the Philadelphia Union Academy as the baby snakes have been impressing all over, from the pro stage to the international stage, and even back here in the States. Let's start with none other than Kevin Sullivan, who was one of five Academy kids to get their pro debut this weekend for Union 2. The 14-year-old U.S. Youth National Team standout entered the match in the 56th minute. And by the 81st, he assisted fellow Academy product Sal Olivas for the game-winning goal. With first-time appearances from Sullivan, Gavin Wetzel, Kellen LeBlanc, Diego Rocio, and Jameer Johnson, Union 2 defeated Revs 2-2-1. 
The U16s will compete in Iber Cup, an elite soccer tournament in Portugal, and they're set to open their tournament run against Atletico Madrid. In preparation for the tournament, the club took on Portuguese power Benfica in a friendly where they won 2-0. Back in the States, the U-17s are prepping for a prestigious tournament of their own as Generation Adidas Cup is on the horizon. This year's tournament will have the most global field of the competition's history, and every MLS Academy will be present at the showcase, with a total of 80 different clubs being represented between all the age brackets. The 17s head down to Bradenton, Florida as the reigning champions, kicking off against Atlas FC in their first group stage matchup. The 15s came runner-up last year, and they're looking to take that final step, starting with Genk in their first matchup of the tournament. The week-long event will have 28 matches broadcasted on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV, including the championship games. So look out for your Philadelphia Union Academy as they battle for a spot in the high-stakes final matchup. That's all for this week. See you next time for your inside scoop on all things Union. It's always good to get an update on the baby snakes. Let's turn our attention back to the first team now because I need keys to the game for the Union's match against Minnesota United. So what are the keys to the game presented by Subaru? I mean, for me, knowing Minnesota, it's uh, top of the you know, table in the West, undefeated as well like the Union, when the only team left uh, in the Major League Soccer this season. For me, the team need to play a full 90 minutes. I, I think we almost saw that in Portland. It was a little bit different type of uh, tactics because we are playing away. This time it's at home. So maybe a little bit more you know, offense from the near, a bit more pressure uh, from the forward and the midfield. But at the same time, it's like having a full 90 minutes, not giving up a late goal. We saw that Minnesota is very good at scoring some late goals at the beginning of the season. They beat a lot of great teams this year. So they need to be careful and they need to be really focused to keep the Union, of course, undefeated, but at the same time getting the first win at home. Especially not getting caught off guard late in a game and making sure you're staying kind of compact and organized exactly. as well. So, uh, Shane, and for you. My key to the game is going to be for the Union to play on the front foot. Can we see a little bit more what we saw in Austin with that high pressure, especially with the Union being at home? Can they look to turn Minnesota over and get some easy chances in the attacking third rather than having to build out of the back. We know that that's not their, their strong suit. We know in Portland that they were a little bit undermanned and sat a little bit deeper, so I'd like to see them get back to that high pressure and seeing if they can't create some easy opportunities. What's your overall scouting report of Minnesota United? Because they have a new head coach this year and they're probably right now the hottest team in the league. Yeah, a new head coach who just got his first game against LFC. You know, big task and he came up with a big win 2-0. Now he's going to be his first game away. Uh, still a very young coach, you know, maybe doesn't know the league very well, but uh, you can see he already has his team uh, on the front foot to, you know, get results. This team didn't really change a lot from last season, you know, so they play all well with the same uh, type of uh, roster, but they have a, a deep roster, especially offensively. They have a lot of weapon who can really hurt the union they really take you know with Puki as a forward from Finland you know is like the bigger threat from them as a center forward but they have a lot of fast players on both sides not sure who is going to play this game is going to be a different time as well at 2 p.m. so a bit different for you know both teams to play at that time instead of playing like the late game hopefully the weather is going to be good this time and we are not going to have any delays or it's going to be too cold but it's supposed to be a good game and uh, just you know, for the union just stick to what you have been doing in, uh, in Portland Having all the guy back, you know, from uh, from that game is going to be great, and uh, see, you know, what will be the best uh, team for uh, Jim Curtin to put against him. And Shannon, from a defensive point of view, given what Minnesota shows specifically, what needs to kind of be on the forefront of these defenders' mind to take that next step in the season? Just staying compact, making sure the distances between each each other aren't too big. If they can do that, then they can stay connected and look to crowd out the numbers of Minnesota. We know how potent they've been in the attack this season, led by, by Puki. So they're going to have to do a good job of, of similar to what they did in Portland, not giving up too much space, not only in the midfield, but in the attacking third and seeing if they can't break this team down a little bit. And again, leading to that high press, if they can high press them and not let the, the ball into those front three, I think they can do a good job of, of looking to, to get some easy goals. We're coming up on a break for now, but when Union Insider returns, we'll tell you the player that Union need to lock up in order to have a chance at three points at home this weekend. Union Insider returns after this. Time now for our Chick-fil-A Nugget of the Week. Julian Carranza scored his sixth multi-goal game with the Union with a brace on Saturday night, tying Daniel Gazdag and Sebastian Lintou for the most in club history. 
Welcome back to Union Insider presented by Independence Blue Cross. We haven't really highlighted an opposing threat in a couple episodes, but Boy, are we going to need to this week as we head into a player profile presented by Subaru. The player we're highlighting this week, that would be Minnesota's only designated player, 33-year-old Timu Puki. The Finnish international is in his first full season with the Loons after five seasons with Norwich City. He scored 10 goals in 14 appearances after coming over as a free transfer last season for Minnesota. He's also Finland's all-time leading goal scorer with 39 goals. So Puki came over to MLS and has just torn it up and he's off to a good start already this season. Why is he able to hit the ground running so well? I think, you know, he really fit very well into, uh, into this lineup, into his teammates. I think he's a very like maybe sneaky forward who always play on the shoulder of the center back and always try to, to get the, the ball into the space. You are not going to see him, you know, fight, you know, with a header and stuff like that, but you are going to see him, you know, try to combine, trying to run off, you know, the, the shoulder of the center backs. And he's very, very good in making those runs. Is uh, you know, very impressed me every time when he come into this league right away, make an impact, like you say, scoring all those goals this year. You know, he always takes time, but for him, he was right away. So they need to be careful. Luckily, he went, you know, this week to uh, his Finnish national team. Hopefully, he might be a bit tired of traveling, not coming back, you know, fully. But we have to really be careful about him this game. Yeah, I feel like he's the type of player that's always kind of at 100 percent. What does he pose as a threat that maybe the union haven't seen defensively? I think he's somebody that can do a little bit of both. And that, those are the hardest guys to mark, the guys that can not only get in behind you and play off your shoulder, but can also create for themselves that can dribble at the top of the box and, and look to create their own shot. So the union are going to have to do a good job of limiting his touches and also just keeping him in front. You never want somebody that likes to play off the shoulder to get in behind you and to make those sneaky runs that Seba talked about. So if they can do a good job of making sure that they keep him in front and then again looking to crowd him out and, and making him play the ball to other players, I think that they can do a good job to keep him at a zero. We know players like this don't kind of exist in a vacuum. So what is the domino effect he has on the rest of his teammates? If the union put a lot of attention on him, what else do they have to look forward to? I mean, if you put too much attention on him, then, you know, they have bigger threat as well, you know, on both of the side of, uh, of the team for the Minnesota. So it's, uh, it's a lot of communication, especially between Elliot Glesnev, if they got paired again like they were against Portland. But then you know, at the same time, it's like making sure when he dropped, like Shannon said, to get maybe the ball a bit lower, maybe Martinez, Bedoya, whoever play, you know, the center position can know where he is and not let a lot of time on him to turn and then go at the defense. So it's, uh, for me, it's always about communication, especially when they play with just one forward not sitting down, but don't be scared you know, to put pressure on him when he comes a little bit deeper. Do you remember playing against any forwards who played in a similar fashion? He reminds me some, similar of Marco De Vallo from from Montreal, somebody that would be offsides 20 times in a game, but he would then be onsides for the one time and punish you for it. So just have to be aware of him. He's got a lot of international experience and also club experience that he uses game in, game out to get himself in good positions to score goals. All right, let's put a pin in our talk about the union for now and uh, take a look at everything else that happened this weekend. So it's time for a look around the rest of the MLS this week in Around the League presented by Torque. First, the Red Bulls welcomed a hot inner Miami team to Harrison, New Jersey this weekend and absolutely throttled them. This was led by Lewis Morgan, who scored a hat trick as the Red Bulls sent Miami home with a 4-0 loss. And listen, there's always drama in MLS, but this game is particularly insane. Sporting Kansas City was up 2-0 in the second half against the LA Galaxy, and then in an instant, the game flipped. Galaxy scored three goals between the 72nd and 80th minute to storm back and take a 3-2 victory over SKC. I'm out of breath just even thinking about that performance, so wild weekend in MLS. When Union Insider returns, Seba and Shannon will give us their players to watch for Saturday's match as the Union hosts Minnesota United FC. Union Insider will be right back after this. Here's the answer to this week's Union trivia question presented by United Concordia. Jacob Glesnez is the only player in Union history to have multiple seasons playing every minute of every match, doing so in both 2021 and 2022. He's the Iron Man for a reason. That sounds exhausting, back-to-back -back years playing every minute of every match. Um, I'm tired thinking about it. So here on Union Insider, uh, presented by Independence Blue Cross, we're getting near to the end of the show, which means it's time for our All-State players to watch, where these two gentlemen give us a player who they think is going to have a big role on Saturday against Minnesota United. So, Seba? 
I'm going to go with uh, Quinn Sullivan this week. I think he had a very good game like everybody else in Portland. He scored his first goal this season uh, in MLS, which was you know huge for him to kind of get started. So I'm thinking of having him maybe his first goal this weekend at home and doing another big performance, you know, really working hard, pressing the defense, but at the same time being in a nice you know combination when the ball you know is going playing forward to him with you know Ura and Caranza and probably Gazdag and make sure that you know he get maybe some assists and some goals. Yeah. Just simple ask. How about you, Shannon? For me, I'm going to go with a defender. I'm going to go with Jacob Glesnes. We talked about Timo Puki and the threat that he poses for this union side. Can Glesnes do a good job of being close to him, making sure that he limits his opportunities and get the union out with a shutout? And with that, we wrap up this week's Union Insider. The union will finally be at home to take on Minnesota United this Saturday at 2 p.m. on Apple TV. If you want to tune into the radio call, Jonathan Yardley and Sebastian Latou will be on 97.5 The Fanatic. So for Shannon and Seba, I'm Marissa Pilla. We'll see you next week.